Hey there, I am back with another deck review, and today we're going to be looking at Reserve Note, the July deck in the King's Wild Shorts line. Now, King's Wild Shorts is the premier subscription service from King's Wild Project and designer Jackson Robinson, and it's the one where Jackson really stretches his legs in terms of creativity. Every single month, you get a completely different and unique inspired deck of cards, and there have been some really off the wall and interesting ones. We've seen decks that are inspired by Nutcracker, by Vision Charts, and even by Meat. Uh, but for this month, Jackson went back to something familiar. Some of the very earliest decks that he did were based on currency, and in 2021, as part of the short series, Jackson's revisited some of those early decks. In the past months, we've already seen Federal 52, Gold Certificate, and Silver Certificate, and now we close out that four deck mini series with Reserve Note. Way back in 2013, when King's Wild was just getting started, they made a series of currency decks all inspired by that beautiful engraving style artwork that is featured on all kinds of US currency. Some really fantastic artwork goes into these decks. Uh, that said, I kind of have some mixed feelings about this. On the one hand, I think it's a great way to let some people enjoy these decks that would have otherwise been really hard to get a hold of. On the other hand, I like the creativity and off the wall inspirations from the shorts line. So to get a fourth deck that's sort of essentially a remake of an older deck this year, uh, a little bit of a disappointment. So I'm excited to see the King's Wild Shorts line get back to some of those really original designs in the coming months. That said, let's get into Reserve Note. Like I said, this one dates back to 2013 with the original deck. Uh, it actually got a remake with some super luxury versions in 2019, but here we have a remake and it's in keeping with in keeping with the same style with some of the other currency decks from this year. All of them have monochromatic tuck cases. This one's done in all red with an accent of red foil. That red on red looks really nice. All done with a matte finish, except for this one bar around the end around the middle here that's done in a glossy finish. It's a really clean look to it overall, very simple. Just says Reserve Note by Jackson Robinson. Gives it a very bespoke feel to it overall. On the side, simple 52 for that Federal 52 series. 52 on the other side. Bottom has some ad copy for King's Wild Project, an expert playing card company who printed the deck. Top just has the name of the deck, Reserve Note. And then back just has that continuation of that glossy band and a simple 52 poking out from the thumb uh, opening here. As you open up the tuck case, nothing at all printed on the interior. The inner flaps here just have that classic number 13. You'll see that all over King's Wild decks. Uh, and no interior printing on this one. So nice tuck case. Again, it's really just in keeping with the previous versions uh, that have been released this year already. So it's a great set to put together, but I would like to have seen something a little bit different and unique on this one. That said, still very clean, very nice. All right, but now let's get into the cards and we'll start with the back design. Uh, this is a, you know, bringing forward that classic design, but it's given like all Jackson decks these days, is given that foil treatment to really bring it next level. It has a really kind of beautifully sort of aged color here. So you've got the off-white background with that sort of parchment feel, and then a mixture of uh, mostly hues of red to form this really detailed and intricate design. You have an eagle with a shield pattern like the American flag on the top, and then reflected on the bottom, and all of it's accented with brilliant silver foil. Uh, this is, to me, one of the highlights of the deck. Some of the previous ones, and particularly if you look at the black reserve notes, super hard to see the details in the back design. But here, you can really appreciate all of this. It's great contrast, beautiful look to it overall. Tons of embellishments, scroll work, and filigree around the edge. Just gives it a really ornate feel. And in the middle, you have the banners that say Vexillum Novus, or New Order beautifully designed. Uh, I love the broken border around the edge that just sort of gives a really organic feel to this overall. Just fantastic job, I think, on the back design. And now into the cards. All right, so we start out with the two Jokers and they're gonna feature characters or scenes that are featured on currency somewhere. Not a surprise on this deck. And like the backs, they're given a full foil treatment. You'll see flashes of both silver 
and red foil throughout these highly glossy cards. Now the two jokers that you see here, the first one over here, this is Lady Liberty. She appears all over US currency and coins, but this particular one's from an 1874 $50 note. You can see her there with the sword in her hand and that crown, beautiful border on the edge, says US and then King's Wild Project on the banner. And then you get those two red King's Wild emblems. Now I will say, I think the artwork's really good in this one, but it comes across really, really dark. It's hard, depending on how you hold this, to see some of the details. You know, if I hit it just right, you'll see some of the finer details pop out. But then if I hold it this way, the whole thing just darkens up and you miss so much of that detail. So I think that's a shame. It comes across really dark and you can see that even more as we go to the other Joker. Now, this is another classic scene in Americana. This is Washington crossing the Delaware. Uh, Washington, as a general during the Revolutionary War, he uh, has a famous painting of him crossing the Delaware with his troops. And so that's what you see depicted here in the center. Beautiful artwork on this one, but once again, I gotta say, you completely miss so much of it with just how dark everything is. It's just so muted and hard to make out the details. Real shame on this one, because I think the foil is really shiny, brilliant, adds a nice detail. One thing that I love on this one, check back here, right? So look at that background, which looks kind of plain, but then as you tilt it in the light, you can see the glowing silver halo on this super fine applied foil that I think is just beautiful. Just a shame with that image that it's so, so dark. And we're going to see that continue really throughout the deck. I'm going to be a little bit of a broken record on it, but I think it's just one of the few things that fell really short on this deck. But anyway, let's get into the Aces. All right, Aces Spade features that big, bold, all silver foiled spade pip in the center. Tons of scroll work on it. The United States and King's Wild Project banners. And then behind it, just an explosion of details, all borrowed from different bits of currency. You have the Bald Eagle or the Eye of Providence, both mainstays in currency. Two more King's Wild emblems. And then you get those small, thin pip and index in all four corners. Nice to make it functional, by the way, if you fan right or if you're left-handed and fan the other direction, still a functional card either way. Once again, the darkness sort of gets in the way of some of the design here. So if you hold it in the light, everything looks great. Hold at the wrong angle, everything darkens up. But anyway, the other three aces are not quite as ornate, but are beautiful in their own right. I love the use of that sort of pinkish color for the foil on the red cards. It's the same color that's used on those King's Wild seals. And each one of them designed to look a little bit like a bill. So you get that fancy pip in the center, whether it be in silver foil or that sort of red pink foil beautiful borders around the edge, and even little details that call to mind currency. You get the ace emblem over here, or the serial number, which is actually a date. Each one of these serial numbers that you see here is representative of some date that's significant in Jackson's life. So here's May 19th, 2009, or November 1st, 2012. I don't know the exact significance of all the dates, but I think it's a cool personal touch to add to the decks. Another thing you'll notice on these three aces is that each one of the suits has its own sort of unique border around the edge. And you'll see that border continued to the court cards of their respective suits as well. But like you'll see this one has a sort of shell design in the corner, whereas this one has a huge explosion of scroll work on the side, super fat border over there. So I like the different borders. I like the variety on these. And overall, I think just really well done aces, if a little bit dark. All right, that's the aces into the number cards. And I think these are done simply, but very well. Pretty classic shape, slightly custom pips there. They do get that border of silver foil. So no card goes without some hit of silver foil. Uh, and then pip and index in all four corners. That sort of watermark of the King's Wild emblem in the back. And those small pips, nice, lots of space between them. But otherwise, pretty classic feel to them overall. So nice. Functional, simple, but I think very well done uh, pips on all of the number cards. So I like those. Diamonds get into a more classic sort of crimson red and then black on the black cards. So there's your clubs and into the hearts. So that's the numbers and the aces, but the highlight of these decks is usually found in the court cards. And these are no exception. 
once again featuring that beautiful artwork and high level of skill from Jackson Robinson. He pulls characters on these court cards straight from different bits of currency throughout the years. And we'll also talk a little bit about who these are. Now, one thing I like on these a lot, the two-way courts all feature a banner here with the name. So if you wanna find out more about the people here, you can go look them up, find out more for yourself. The original deck, because it was printed by, I believe USPCC, featured four extra cards, not just two. And so it came with an extra card that told you who all the characters were. But in lieu of that here, we get the banners on these. Uh, so we can still find out more. So the first one he, so we see here, the Jack of Spades, this is William P. Fessenden. Uh, comes from a series 1882 $10 note. And he was actually a main politician who became the Secretary of Treasury under Lincoln. The love the look of this one overall. I think it's a great card. Once again, suffers from that darkness when you hit it with the wrong light. Some of that detail gets pretty muddled, but still really brilliant artwork on this one. And those hits of silver really help this pop when you hit it in the right light. All right, Queen of Spades here. So on a lot of the spade card, or a lot of the Queen's uh, you'll see fictional characters mentioned instead of real life ones. That's because there aren't nearly as many uh, females to draw on from US currency in part. Uh, but here we just see Liberty in the center. This is of course Lady Liberty. We saw her on the Joker already, but this is Lady Liberty as she comes from a series 541 $10 uh, military payment certificate. So the military, military used to get paid in special certificates they looked a lot like classic currency, and so Lady Liberty was on one of those bills. So there's the Queen of Spades. And then the King of Spades, maybe the most famous of all currency figures is Benjamin Franklin, appears on the $100 bill. All about the Benjamins. All right, now we go into the Jack of Diamonds. So they didn't always feature presidents or famous politicians. Some cards featured innovators like this one here. This one is Samuel Morse, the inventor of Morse code. And he appeared on an 1896 $2 note. Love the beard there. He has a pretty epic beard going, but really like that one. Again, that foil looks great, looks dark in the wrong light, but looks brilliant if you hit it with the right light. All right, going to the Queen of Diamonds. This is a really beautiful one, in my opinion. Uh, this is just a random portrait. I believe it's been known before as the Marilyn Monroe note before, uh, but this is just a female, uh, random female portrait here. Comes from another military payment certificate, this time a series 611, $10 one. But really love that sort of movie star actress look that she's got on her face there. All right, and then the King of Diamonds. This is Alexander Hamilton. Comes from a series 1880 $20 note. So love that kind of stately look with the profile picture of him. All right, on to the Jack of Clubs. We go back to the presidents here. This is James Madison from a $5,000 note. I did not know that there was a $5,000 note, but Madison appeared on one. And then the Queen of, Queen of Clubs. This one just says Flowers of the South. This is another fictional character from a portrait that appeared on another military payment certificate, this time a $5 military note. But that's a really cool picture on that one. So I like that he found female characters from currency. I wish they were more represented on them and we could have seen more of them in here, more real characters from history on this one. But that's not Jackson's fault. That's more a function of currency in the U.S. All right, and the king of clubs, this is probably my favorite of the bunch. This is Running Antelope. There weren't many Native Americans that appeared on currency, and Running Antelope was one of the first. Uh, appeared on a series 1899 $5 note. Love the headdress and that just sort of stoic look on his face. All right, on to the last suit. and We have the Jack of Hearts. This is Seward right here. Uh, uh, William Seward. He was the Secretary of State under Lincoln and appeared on the 1891 $50 note. And then next up is Hypatia. This is actually a character from history, but not American history. Uh, she was an Egyptian mathematician, actually. Uh, but she also appeared on U.S. currency at one point, appeared on another military payment certificate, this time a series 661 50 cent note. So very, uh, very kind of pious look on her uh, with the headdress there. All right, and last but not least is none other than Andrew Jackson. 
uh, appeared on the 1907 $5 note. Love the sword behind his head in that classic Suicide King pose and it sort of glints with that silver foil. But once again, like I said before, broken record, that darkness really sort of loses some of that beautiful detail, it's unfortunate. And that is it, that is the deck. Now as far as handling, Jackson's been playing around with handling a lot and I think while it's improved a lot, it's still not all the way there. These cards are definitely thicker than average, a good bit stiffer. They certainly though do slide a lot better than they have in the past. Still a little bit of clumping on these and they tend to be just a little bit slippery at the same time. Don't know how to describe it. The other thing I'll say about these, if you get them, they have a super distinct odor. If you pull these out, it's almost like a varnishy sweet smell. Really bizarre and super strong. Definitely noticeable on these cards. That said, the handling's come a really long way. These have thinned down a lot as uh, experts switched over to kind of a cardistry stock, uh, but still thicker than usual just because of the levels of finish and foil and everything that are applied on this. So not the best handling deck in the world. Uh, that said, I think for uses this, this is mostly gonna be an art or collector's deck for people. So don't think too many people are worried all that much about the overall handling of the deck. But that is it. That is the standard edition version of the uh, reserve note. Now I actually get the limited version of the deck as well, not just the standard. And that's this one here. Now I don't open them up just because the cards inside are exactly the same as the standard version. It just comes in a different tuck. So in this one, rather than being the red and red, this one gets a gray color with that red foil. I think it's a really, really elegant color combination on this one. That gray and red looks really good together. Only other difference on this one is the inclusion of the sticker on the back that numbers it out of the 600 deck edition. Uh, so I get number 265. So there's the limited version of the deck. But that's it. That is our look at the reserve note deck from Kingswall Project July deck in the Kingswall Shorts line. If you're not a subscriber to Shorts, I'll put a link down in the description where you can go sign up for yourself. I haven't really regretted it since joining. That said, mentioned this at the beginning, I cannot wait to get back to more original decks and less remakes. I think the remakes, while they're beautiful, I love the chance to get some of these decks that maybe I didn't pick up back in the day. I really like shorts for that overall unique feel. The more out there, the better for me. So can't wait to find out what other decks are in line for this year. That's it for now. Hope you enjoyed this look at Reserve Note. Make sure to subscribe for more deck reviews and unboxings. Let me know what else you want to see, and I'll see you for the next one.